What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an ultra tiny Windows 11 Pro mini PC from a company known as GMK Tag. On the channel, we've taken a look at a lot of their offerings, but nothing quite as small as this one here because this is coming in at 1.4 inches by 1.4 inches. And as you can see, I mean, this thing is absolutely tiny, fits in the palm of your hand, and it's a full-fledged Windows 11 PC. It's actually running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box, and you can upgrade the M.2 SSD in this up to two terabytes. But one of the most exciting things about this mini PC is the price, coming in at only around $150 with a coupon over on Amazon and their website. And just to give you an idea of how small this thing really is, I've got an Xbox controller here. It's just the Starfield branded controller. And of course, one of the most popular mini PCs on the market is the Raspberry Pi 5. So I did want to give you a quick comparison here. Raspberry Pi 5 next to that G5. And obviously the G5 is a lot larger, but it's not by much given what we can do with this PC. Inside of the box, along with the G5 mini PC, you're going to get a user manual and you'll also get your power adapter. This is actually a 12 volt, 3 amp USB type C power adapter. And that's about it. That's all we're getting with this unit. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got a micro SD card slot. And around back, we've got USB Type-C, and this is only for power in. Unfortunately, it doesn't do video out or data. Kind of wish it did. That way, we could use this in single cable operation mode. But we've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two full-size HDMI ports, another USB 3.2 port, and gigabit Ethernet. Even though we're working with such a small form factor unit, we do have a little bit of upgradability here. Actually surprised to see this, but it does utilize a 2242 M.2 SSD. We can go up to two terabytes with this, and it comes pre-installed with a Wi-Fi 5 card, but you could get in here and upgrade to a Wi-Fi 6 card if you needed it. Usually with many PCs this small, we don't have any way to upgrade anything, so I'm really glad that we can do the storage and that Wi-Fi card. Taking a look at the overall specs here for the G5, we've got the Intel N97 CPU, and this is one that we haven't tested on the channel, and it does outperform the N100, even though it's coming in at a lower number, so I guess Intel really doesn't care. Four cores, four threads, up to 3.6 gigahertz. We've got built-in UHD graphics with 24 execution units, and this will boost up to 1.2 gigahertz as opposed to the N100 750. 12 gigabytes of LP DDR5 at 4800 megahertz. We've also got that 2242 M.2 SSD. We can add up to a two terabyte drive here. And out of the box, this is running Windows 11 Pro. Another big difference between the N97 and the N100 is that this actually is rated at a 12 watt TDP instead of six like that N100, which means we can get those clocks up where we need them to be. So far, it's actually working out pretty well here with Windows 11 Pro. We've got that N97, 12 gigs of 4800 megahertz LP DDR5 RAM, and the built-in UHD graphics. Now, recently, we took a look at an N200 CPU, which does outperform the N100 and the N97 because we've got a better GPU over there. 32 execution units instead of 24 like we have with the N97, but this thing still handles older titles, indie titles, and even emulation way better than I thought it would. Now, I was really interested to see how they have this thing running. It's not a totally silent PC. We've actually got a built-in fan, but it's super quiet, even maxed out here. I haven't messed around with the BIOS or anything, and it looks like we're getting a TDP of around 11 watts on the CPU but we can also stress out this iGPU, and that's also gonna need a little power. So luckily, they've actually got this set up with about a 15 to 16 watt boost. And we're getting close to the maximum clocks on that iGPU. So all in between the CPU and the iGPU, we've got a maximum TDP here of around 16 watts. Now remember, this does come with Wi-Fi 5 built in, but you've also got that ethernet. We're gonna be messing around on Wi-Fi right now, and it would have been nice to have Wi-Fi 6 from the factory, but we can always swap that card out. Web browsing here is still really quick. Heading over to GMK Tech's website. We'll go right to the G5 section here, and you can see on their website, $159.99 with their coupon, and I think it's a little cheaper over on Amazon, but everything loads up really quickly on this little setup here. Now I want to test out some 4K video playback from YouTube. So we'll head over there, we'll find something. We'll do 4K 60 HDR. Usually like testing one of these demos. But yeah, I mean, it's loading up this page just fine. And of course we are using the Edge browser. If you wanted to install Firefox or Chrome, you could always do it. We'll go with the Sony sizzle reel here. 
And I actually just swapped over to Chrome because I'm seeing better performance here in Chrome with 4K video playback from YouTube. And it looks like in Chrome here, 4K 60, we've got zero drop frames with this video, which is really awesome. And I've always had really good luck with these N-series chips, even in the Edge browser. But for some reason, by the end of this, I was having around 25 drop frames on the N97. So swapping over to Chrome is definitely the way to go. So far, not too bad for everyday tasks like web browsing, email checking, document editing, and even 4K video playback. And of course, a micro PC like this was never intended to be a gaming machine, but we will be testing out some gaming and emulation on this system. But first thing I wanted to look at were some benchmarks. And with this, I'm seeing some pretty interesting results. On the G5 with that Intel N97, I got a single core of 1,371. Multi-core, 3,524. Now, if we move down the list, you can see I've also tested the Intel N200 and the N100, both at 15 watts, so we're right there, kind of same TDP. And the N97 is coming ahead in single and multi-core, which is a bit odd because the N200 actually has a higher boost clock by 100 megahertz, 3.7. So I figured the N200 would be ahead, but the N97 is winning with these tests. So let's go ahead and check out some GPU benchmarks. I just ran one here, 3D Mark Night Raid. We scored a 5,921 on the G5 with the N97. And again, I did run the same test on that N200 and the N100. And even though the N200's iGPU has more compute units, the N97 came ahead in this test also. Now we gotta see how well this thing can game, and we're not gonna be doing AAA games on this thing, but any games and older titles will run pretty decently at 900p. We've got Hades 2 Early Access. If you purchase it on Steam, you can actually play it right now at the time of making this video. 900p Medium, running at 60 FPS. I don't mind playing it like this. Definitely looks good at 900p. Going back a bit further, Dirt 3, just an easier one to run, and I wanted to get a feel for what we could do with this machine. 900p, medium, we're getting an average of around 81 FPS. And again, I know it's an older one, but it's still a lot of fun to play. So looking at this, I mean, stuff like Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and even OG Skyrim will be playable. But with this, I did have to take it down to low settings. I wanted to do 900p medium. We just don't have enough GPU power here. But at those low settings, we're getting a constant 60 FPS. So going into a little machine like this, you just got to understand that it's not going to do AAA games. You could always do cloud gaming or even stream from another more powerful PC. It's going to handle it just fine. But the last thing I wanted to show off here was some emulation because this is some pretty impressive performance. Starting off here with PSP using PPSSPP, 3x resolution, DirectX 11, and this game natively ran at 30 FPS. There are mods or hacks that'll allow you to run it at 60, and I'm pretty sure we probably could have went up to 5x, but it still looks pretty good at 3. Let's move over to something a bit harder to run with PSP, and that's going to be Ghost of Sparta. We're still at 3x resolution, DirectX 11 back in, and I didn't even swap over to OpenGL or Vulkan because this was working so well. And it looks like we're going to be able to play these PSP games no problem at all. This is definitely one of the harder ones to run. So given that we can do this at 3x, easier to run games will be able to upscale even more than this. I'd probably leave it at native with most of the stuff and then drop it down when you need it with a game like God of War. Next up, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin Emulator, Bloody Roar, Native Res, DX11. Unfortunately, there are some games that are just going to struggle on this no matter what you do. Like F-Zero GX on some of the harder to run stages will drop into the 50s, and there's really nothing I could have done about it. I did try Vulcan and DX11. I just think we don't have enough GPU power here. But there are a lot of GameCube games that are going to run really well. We've got Auto Modalista, one of my favorites to test, and I consider this a harder to run game. We're at the native GameCube resolution. Upscaling with some of the easier to run stuff is possible, going up to 2x, so around 720p. But with this one here, we did have to keep it at that native res, but it is running at a constant 60. So we're getting some good GameCube performance out of this little machine also. And the final thing we tested here was some PS2 emulation. PC SX2, 2x resolution, DirectX 11 back in with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. This is an easier one to run, so upscaling wasn't hard at all. I've got all the information we need up in the top right hand corner here. 
And with the awesome work from the developers of PCSX2, we've been Watch seeing out. some good performance on lower end systems, but there are games we still need to drop that resolution down with. Like Ratchet and Clank, I tried this at 2x and it was struggling a little bit, but taking it down to the native PS2 resolution allowed us to play it at 60 FPS. Another thing I like to monitor with these mini PCs while doing my testing is total system power consumption. So I use a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall, and at idle this only pulls 4 watts. 4K video, I did see it jump up to around 9 watts. Average gaming and emulation were around 13 watts in total. And the maximum that I could get the G5 to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and GPU was only 19 watts. So this thing basically sips power, and I do think it's a really good little PC, especially given the price point that GMK Tech has it at. If you're looking for something, do some web browsing, video playback, document editing, light gaming, and even some light emulation, the G5 can handle it, as you saw in this video. But don't pick one of these up thinking you're going to be able to play Cyberpunk 2077 and edit 4K video. It's just not going to happen on this chipset. But for a lot of other things, this is a great little PC, and I personally love the form factor here. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave some links down below. And like always, thanks for watching.